And it's at that moment where he says, I'm trying to tell you something, but you, you're so cluttered and you're so going that you can't hear me. Mm. So as I said, this sermon came and was finished at about 4 o'clock yesterday. I hate that. Why? I don't want to be rushed. I want to be able to go through it, work through it. Did I hear it right? Whatever. And Ma's laughing because she knows the answer already. But anyway, and it's Mara backs her up. And then my wife, it all goes around. So, but, but some days, you know, what you think you should do is not what he says he wants because there's something else. And I'm fighting all week long, like Jacob wrestling, but saying, I want a blessing, you know, give me, give me, give me, give me. And he's saying, would you stop wrestling with me? I got something for you. Would you listen? And so finally it got to Friday and I'm like, we're getting down to a DEF CON red right here. And so I originally gave the task to my son to do the grass, I mean the young whippersnapper that he is, and you know, he was ready, but then he started getting into a coughing attack because we had bad allergies that day. And if you remember, Seth was in the hospital for a little puncture in his lung. And if he goes into it and then exerts himself, he could be right back in the hospital again. And so I knew that dad needed to step up. And I'm going, oh, but I've got all this stuff, Lord, I haven't even looked at this week because I got this, 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 this family goes me for help, this, and da, 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 da. And all of a sudden, it's like everything starts to explode in your head, right? Again, pastor's the only one. I know, I get it. Just work with me, okay? And so I'm, I'm, I'm clouded with all this stuff. I'm, I'm going, I'm behind, and I need to write the sermon and everything. I'll go cut the grass. So I'm out there trying to cut the grass. I don't have a mask on, and the dirt I'm swallowing right now, I'm going <coughs> the whole way, right? You might have thought I smoked like 10 packs of cigarettes while I was doing this. And I'm just, you know, my wife is out with Seth, they're doing errands and everything, and I'm just like trying to figure this out. I'm having a fight in my mind, in my body, and my spirit all at the same time. My mind won't be quiet, my body's saying, can you protect me from this dirt that you're inhaling? And my spirit is saying, I don't need you, God. I got this. Oh, come on. Is anybody with me here? Yeah. The whole trifecta, man. And when you get all three things that aren't working right, and then you're blaming God because your life is messed up. Oh, come on. No, never. Right? <laughs> but, 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 but it happens. Now, some of you are way better than me, and you've got this thing figured out. I know. I know what the problem is. I just don't get the memo, as Mary would say. And I know she's watching. I saw you. I saw you. Okay? This is important because when we're fighting, we always... Well, I shouldn't say we. The tendency in the Christian faith is the devil made me do it. It's always Satan's fault. We give him so much credit on things, it's not even funny. Whenever something goes wrong, oh, the devil's trying to stop me. That's not always the case. You know who can, who can be your worst enemy? You! I got the memo, Denise. you believe that? I got the memo. It took me a while, but I got it. And so, that's what happens. You start becoming your worst enemy. You're blaming God for things. You're having this war, and you're thinking it's a spiritual battle with Satan. When it's really you. He's having a holiday. He's down at the beach with everybody else going, what's happening, guys? You're away from church. I did my job. Uh, Steve, we'll just let him go on his own and go fight his own battle. That's easy. <laughs> I get a smoke break. This, my friends, is what Jesus addressed in the next scriptures we're going to get into. He knows that we get so worried about things. We get so jacked up about things. How are we going to pay for this? This suddenly breaks. And how are we going to fix that? And, oh, this is the worst time because I have the money in the bank to pay for this. And I just got this. Or, you know, like all of a sudden you're moving your, your patio screen door that needs to be replaced anyway. And suddenly the thing just starts to separate miraculously. And God, you have a neighbor that knows what he's doing. But anyway, thank you, Frank. <laughs> so, and it did. The glass started to separate from the frame. To the point where birds could have came in and were like singing. I could have had like, you know, a nest up in the, in the uh, roof because everything was just porous. It just come in and out. 
But I don't have the money for that to fix that. Lord, what are you doing? And, you know, Frank just comes over. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And he gets this vice thing that, I don't know, it looks like a torture thing or something. They torture people with in the 16th century. And he pulls this thing together. He puts it, he starts screwing it. And the next thing you know, this window comes together and he, and he does this little screw here and screw there. And he walks away and goes, see ya. <laughs> Makes it look so easy. And I'm worried about all this, Ma. Can you believe that, right? And he comes over, calm as a cucumber. Yeah, I got that. I just need your drill real quick. And I'm sitting there going, this is a miracle. Because there ain't no way I'm handling it, right? So the fight is going on in my mind, in my body, in my spirit. Lord, how, what, why? Ding, 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 ding. And then I'm sitting there going, you're not talking to me. I'm not hearing you. What's going on? And here he comes, right on cue, showing up in my garage. Okay. Backs up the white truck. It's like, here we go again. And a bail pays her out. And all that worry, you know what that did to my body? If you look it up and see how stress can destroy you and kill you, that's exactly what the enemy wants. Jesus. And if he can get you focused on yourself and constantly get that going, he'll kill you. This is no joke. Your heart starts racing. You start to, you start to, you know, your, 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 your lungs start to not inhale right. You start getting short of breath. Anxiety. Anxiety exactly, Denise. And, and you start, you start feeling tense. You start worrying. Your heart's going like this and you're just sitting and you're going, wow, I'm just looking at TV. And all of a sudden your heart's just going a mile a minute. And you don't even know why. Because your body is in such a flight or flight stance that it just, it just needs to react. Because in the back of your mind, somehow, some way, you're rehearsing the same thing over and over again. How, what, when, why, how, what, when, why. Is anybody here with me? Yeah. And then when that happens, your body goes into destruction mode. <clears throat> and so, they, you know, the, the saying is, don't have caffeine when you're jacked up, buddy. When you're really jacked up because you're now accelerating your, your heart rate even more so and everything is really going. And so now you feel like you're going to have a heart attack. And Jesus knows that and he says, hey, listen, guys, I know the Romans have occupied you. I know that you're, you're, you feel like, you know, everybody around you is, is threatening you. But come to me. Come to me. And these awesome words come from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It's probably one of the, my, people ask me what's my favorite set of verses. I've got a ton of them. But this set of verses right here is probably one of my favorites. Because it's so peaceful. It's so like, just, just, just come. It's like, it's like when McKinley was, was, you know, coming to me and I, I wanted to take her in the other room so her mom could praise God and I could watch her for a little bit. And I went like this and she looked at me and her eyes like this and she came right up to me and jumped right into my arms. That's exactly what God wants us to do. He wants us to stop worrying and jump into his arms and focus on him. Oh, but Lord, the church, the church, the church. Yeah, and... Oh God, please. Yeah, and? But we need to, and? Next? Right? So here are the verses. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Is anybody here today weary and burdened? Mm. <laughs> it's like, touchdown, man. And that's okay to say that. That's all right. That's an admission. But listen to what he goes on to say. Come to me, right? All you are weary and, and burdened, and I will give you rest. Oh, does that sound amazing? If he was here right now, physically, right now, manifest himself, first of all, I'd drop over because I'd be like, oh, you know. And secondly, to have him here, 
and saying to all of us and saying, come guys. And he gives us all a hug. And in spirit, sometimes he does do that, like right now, to let you know that he's here. In spirit, he's here. I felt it today. I just felt this calmness come over me when I walked in. I'm watching all the cars go by and everything, and I'm just like, okay. I can't wait to come to church. I can't wait to preach. I don't even know what this is going to be about because it's so late. I don't know what you're going to do today, Lord. I have no clue, no clue, no clue. And, and, and I just I just want to give all you guys a big, like, Pastor Steve hug, you know? <laughs> and I'm just feeling it today. He's here. He's letting us know that whatever we're going through right now, in our lives separately and also together as a church, it's okay. Come to Him. He's got it covered. Put your trust in Him, not yourself. And every time the flesh Steve comes back, I start getting like, <sighs> and then my wife has to calm me down, and then I have to go, oh, okay, I almost jumped off the legs, but I'm all right. I'm good now. But it's a hard deal when you want to control things. And for all my control freaks out there, <laughs> we want absolute control over our lives, don't we? We want it all, and we want it now. <laughs> all right. So, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Before you finish the sentence, a yoke, as I've explained before, that was used for animals, it, is, it was something to join the animals together so they could plow together. Okay? You don't want to be unequally yoked. What do I mean by that? And again, I say this kindly because situations change and so forth, but when you get married with someone, preferably, you want to be yoked with someone who is also a believer. You cannot control what happens after that, but you can control what you do before that, okay? The second thing with that is, you don't want to be yoked with Satan. And what does that mean? Well, I don't do no devil worship, and I don't do any of that stuff, right? No, all you gotta do is start worrying and doing things that the devil wants you to do, and you're yoked with him right there. And if you're not a believer, you're already yoked to him. But sometimes, as believers, we're supposed to be yoked to him because now he's bought us, he lives inside of us, but then we try to take the yoke off and put another person next to us that isn't supposed to be there. And he's saying, come to me, and then he says, learn from me. There is something to obedience. Do you realize that there's almost at least 40 commandments that Jesus gave in the New Testament, in the Gospels? 40. When you dice them apart, almost 40 things that he wanted us to do, especially the Sermon on the Mount. But it goes further than that. So as a Christian, we are to learn what he wants us to do, how he wants us to live. And when we live under what he says to do, we don't have to worry as much. We don't have to be burdensome as much because we're doing what he wants us to do. When we go outside of that, we've got problems. If I told all of you guys to go over to the coffee pots over there, and don't worry about how hot it is, just put, hit the spout and put your hand over there. And you go, well, you know what? Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'll do whatever I want. I'll do it. And you get burned. Oh, well, you know, we don't love you. You know, we don't, you don't need to tell me what to do. Well, guess what? There was a reason why in common sense that you shouldn't do that. And so you burn your hand. Why do we correct our kids? Because we don't want to see them get hurt. Right? Well, the world says, oh, you're hurting their psyche. So don't correct them. Let them do whatever they want and put them in a little, little tiny out corner. Yeah, that's worked real well for us, hasn't it, guys? Okay, yeah. The next part of the sentence, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Oh. If we are gentle and humble in heart, how much could we change the world? 
If my wife and I were gentle and humble in heart with each other, how much better our marriage would be. And when we are, it's awesome. When we're not, war is hell. <laughs> I'm kidding. But the bottom line is it's the truth with anyone, any one of us. When we are gentle and humble with each other, I think you're going to get a lot of hate dirt there. But when we're not, and we're the complete opposite, you're going to get problems. So to finish it, and you will find rest for your souls. Why do we have to wait until the gravestone goes on to get peace? I, I, I didn't catch that with that. Now maybe I'm misinterpreting it somehow. I don't know. But I can tell you, I think he means both. I think he means here and there. Because I don't believe for one minute that he's calling us to come around, going around worrying about everything and getting crazy about stuff because what we're saying is, you're not big enough, God, to handle my problems. And even though we may stir up our own stuff, he's still not big enough to come in and show us what? And show us how. So let's finish it. For my yoke is easy. Let's read this together. Okay, ready? For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm. Just to feel that and just put your mind at ease for a minute. And just picture him being right there in front of you. And just saying, come child. Mm, mm, mm. Easy and light. You remember Lionel Richie singing that old song, Easy Like Sunday Morning? <laughs> it, it, it's just, it, there's such a, a, a release when I read this, and I'm like, it's like sometimes when he talks, he's like, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that, and all of a sudden he stops with this one, and he goes, hey, come to me. Just, just, just chill with me. That, that stuff that you're worried about, those things that you're anxious about, those things that you're getting crazy about, stop it. Just come to me. Sit under me. You're, you're going through something right now. I don't know what it is. And you're just, you're just so stressed out. Just picture this. If, if at the end of the service, Jesus said, look, he transforms the cross into a tree, and he says, come here, guys. Come on, just sit up here. All of you, just come up here. Let's just sit and talk. As a matter of fact, I don't even want you to talk. Just come to me. Just give me your problems. You got family members that are really, really stressing you out. You got somebody near and dear to you that is on her deathbed. The doctor's giving you a bad report that you might have cancer yourself. You have a lump in your throat, but you don't know how, why, and it could be lethal. The courts are saying that they might haul you off the jail because of all the things that you haven't paid. Somebody has stolen your identity and now they're ringing up every credit card you could possibly think of. And you went from...